Namaste and welcome. Namaste. Thank you for sharing this evening for Card Pull Under the New Moon. This is Chantel from She Achieves Studio, hanging out in the veranda with three decks of cards, some candles, some sage, and a little bit of universal guidance for everyone. So let's call in some sacred space this evening. And please bring your hands to your heart center, whether you're standing, kneeling, lying, or seated. Gently humble the head, lengthen the back of the neck, and a belly breath in, and a belly breath out. And again, belly breath in, and belly breath out. We call upon sacred space this evening under the new moon in Scorpio. We call upon not only all of the directions, the elements, the gunas, the spirits, the sacred spirits, the walkers of this earth and the walkers that are now walking into the heavens above. Satnam. And may we bring peace and reverence to not only our world, but to ourselves in this space. And we call upon Mother Earth as above and as below and all that lies in between to bring us reverence, to bring us a sense of presence, of peace, joy, and love. <sighs> Beautiful. Thank you. And you can open your eyes if you like. I am going to light some Palo Santo this evening. It's important to call in some sacred space, especially when you're working with divinations. And as a yogi, we call in sacred space through the mantras and mudras of chanting Om. And tonight we just called in sacred space with that little prayer. And now we're also continuing the sacred space. And this Palo Santo is actually, it says guidance on it, which is beautiful because that's why we're here. Tonight I'm offering a card pull. I do have three decks. Oh, I just blew the, I just blew the match out. Um, I have three decks, so we're going to play around with those. We'll see how it goes. I don't know how long this is going to be, so... If you hang around, very cool, peace out. If you are not interested, peace out as well. And if you watch this recording after, that is amazing as well. You can always receive lots of love through the airways of the internet nowadays because vibration and resonation is etheric. It follows you, it guides you, just like this flame. And we ask that this flame, yeah, bring in the elements and light our way in the darkness under the new moon this evening. Because we know where there is darkness, there is also light. And without darkness, there would be no light. So here with the sacred space, especially at She Achieves Studio, we honor that we rise into the vibration above good or bad, right or wrong. And I ask that you honor exactly where you're at in this moment and whether you watch the entire live again, I don't know how long it's going to be. I'm just showing up because I miss talking about yoga and life. <laughs> so that's why we're here under the new moon. And I'm going to chime some beautiful chimes and I will chime three times and we start the um we start the evening with the three chimes because we have the three decks of cards beautiful thank you ashley hello and i think a few other names popped up that i missed hello to everyone watching thank you i miss you too right hanging out like seriously i just jive to the universe as much as i possibly can and 
when there's an opportunity to share that jive and vibe with other people, especially kindred souls who get it, it's, it's beautiful. So thank you for joining. Thank you. All right. So we called in sacred space. We're honoring the heavens as well as the earth. And we are going to start the cards this evening. Oh, it's new moon. I'm so excited. So thankful to be here with uh, a yogic path. Okay, so we have to come into an intention, though, for this card reading. Oh, I see a little spider hanging down. He's so tiny, and it looks like he's floating. Hi, spider. Thank you for joining as well. Aw, Jimmy. Jimmy. Hi, Jimmy. Oh, I love it. Aw. Aw. Mother Nature's joining us as well. And it sounds like it was raining out a little bit, too. Okay, universal guidance, new moon. Let's just take a breath and think about this. Okay, so uh, we, have, <clears throat> we have many paths, okay? We have many paths in this life. We have many paths in many lifetimes. However, the path in this lifetime, I see that there is more than one path and that we... <sighs> The, the choices are always there, yet, oh, uh, courage. Okay, whew, that was a fast download. Hello. Okay, thank you. So the courage, we're asking the universal guidance to help us uh, ignite. I don't know if ignite is the right word. Um, to light our courage to choose the path, not knowing where it will take us. So um, what's the word of uh, faith? We're having faith. So um, our intent this evening is faith and courage. And that's what this first card pull is going to offer us. Okay. So in the meantime, let's think about what faith and courage means to you. And I would love, I would love to hear your answers. Ah, oh, Melanie, peace out. Yeah, yeah, we're just like hanging out, right? Talking universe. Like, why not? That's what I want to do, like all the time. And that's what I do do. And thank you for sharing. I love that there's so many kindred souls out there that are willing to just expand. Okay, faith and courage. What does faith and courage mean to you? Anybody? Faith and courage. What does that mean to you? What does faith and courage mean to you? Faith and courage. Ooh, faith is a tough one for me. Courage, uh, no problem. Just uh, putting intent and action together so they're somewhat balanced. Courage to live authentically and faith to start something new. Wow. Yeah, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you for that. Is that Ashley that said that? Yeah. Um, oh, and Melanie, having faith is trusting. Well, and isn't, isn't there a sense of courage that has to go with trust as well? Like, don't we have to tap into a sense of courage um, to have faith and, and to believe in that faith? I love that. Thank you so much for sharing. To me, faith is grace, like being very graceful and being very gentle. I, I don't think you can force faith. I think, oh, but I think in the world there are situations out there that try to force us into faith, into believing and, and trying to convince us of something when that's where we come back. We bring that energy back to have the courage to believe in us. And we call this sovereignty. We call this sovereignty. It is knowing that I have four paths in front of me and my heart and my gut, that navel point and the intuition is going to guide me collectively into the path and I'm going to be okay in that path. And that's faith and courage. And don't they go hand in hand? This is so cool. I've never thought about, okay, like honestly, I've never thought about faith and courage 
<clears throat> being kind of the same. And I, I know they're different words, like I get that. Yet, how do these dualities sort of weave together? Well, that's what we're going to find out. That's what we're going to find out. Yes, right? I love it. Okay. Okay, universe, we're open to you. New moon. Oof, oof, there we go. Two cards. Ah, okay. Ooh, okay. <clears throat> Interesting. So I'm going to do a little sidetrack here before I read the cards. Uh, so some of you may know that I'm, fingers crossed, I'm doing it, offering yoga teacher training through Yoga Alliance next year. Okay. I'm in the process of the application and the, the intent of this yoga training is called Guna Yoga. And if you've ever worked with me, I talk about the Gunas a lot. Yes, because the Gunas are the three universal qualities of all universe, of all the universe, everything, 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 including a thought, uh, a piece of bacon, um, a movie, the stars. Um, what do you call them when the stars explode, when planets are shooting? No, is that a shooting star? I don't know. When, when the planets explode, all of that. The universe itself are, is made up of the three gunas. And the three gunas, uh, the first one is Rajas, which is fire element. The second one is Tamas, which is earth element. And the third is Sattva, which is air element. So all of those elements are combined into the universe. And that's the yoga teacher training that I'm going to be teaching. Yay! Okay, so why I brought that up uh, is because the first card is Sattva. Sattva. When we are in a sattvic state, we see peace. We see, ha, 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 are you ready for this? We see faith and courage equally when we're in a sattvic state. At the sattvic, sattvic state. If we're in a rajasic state, we might veer towards the courage over the faith. Uh huh. When we're in a tamasic state, we may find faith over courage. You get what I'm laying down? Okay, so sattva. <clears throat> um, and the next card, These. this is part of the, uh, I can do this, the Eight Limbs of Yoga by the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, which we will also be covering in Guna Yoga. Um, svadhyaya. 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 Svadhyaya? <gasps> I try. <laughs> okay. So we have sattva. Let's find out how sattva has to do with faith and courage. So in the meantime, can you take a deep breath into the belly uh, for a few rounds, a few cycles, and sink into the belly. Sink into the belly and take a few deep breaths. Okay, Sattva, Ayurveda. And for some of you who have come in for Thai Yoga Massage, you know that it is based off of Ayurveda, the, uh, I guess, kind of sister science of yoga. And um, that's what I talk about all the time. Okay, Sattva, purity and clarity. So let's talk about Sattva <clears throat> equally with faith and courage and see what comes up for you. Okay, see what shows up. Observe what comes up without having to name it, good or bad, right or wrong. Okay, see if you can do that. Okay, so <clears throat> we're talking about faith and courage. Okay, Sattva. You have to let go of the things that were holding you back and are reaching deeper levels of clarity. Okay. Maybe you've cleaned up your diet, home, self-care products, relationships, thought patterns, career goals, or life outlook, and are now experiencing the joys that come with purity. Sattva. So again, with sattva, it's air element. You are in harmony. You are in, set, you are in a sense of balance. Okay? You see the light and you see the dark equally. Because one could not exist without the other. 
Yeah, totally. What a fitting message for the new moon. Beautiful, Ashley. Absolutely. Because the new moon is open. Um, it's, it, yeah, it's, it's dark. We don't see it, but it's still there. Okay. And it still radiates that energy and it brings us into the light from being into the dark because the full moon follows it. And in the next couple of days, we're going to see the, the light appear in the moon, the waxing. Okay. Part of the moon, it's going to start to become bigger and brighter after that dark phase. And, you know, can we really relate this to so many things in our life? Um, our life experiences, the cycles, the cycles of life, which are, can be so painful and so grief stricken. And grief is such a dynamic form of love. And to be able to see that, to be able to see that light in the dark, that takes courage. It takes courage to, to lift above the fear. And it takes courage to honor the grief. It's not about rising out of grief. It's about honoring the grief. Okay, cool. All right. Woo. This is like so cool. I could just like do this 24 hours. You know what? You know what I'd like to do? The gamers. Okay. So I have like, I've, I'm surrounded by boys in the house <clears throat> and even Mackenzie. He's not here, but he surrounds me still. And, um, I, they, there's all these gamers do you know that some of the gamers have like thousands and thousands of subscribers and they do like 24 hour telethons and gameathons? It's like, I think, I think I should do like a 24 hour, uh, Chantelathon <laughs> and we could raise money for like a charity. What do you think? I don't even know how to plan that. So if someone's out there who loves planning something like that, I would, I, I would consider it. I would consider doing a 24 hour Chantelathon if someone could get it started and we could like fundraise. Oh my God, we could do it for November and fundraise for November. That would be like so cool. I, I don't know how to do that though. I have no idea. I would just, I would want someone to be able to do all of that and I would just show up because I, I, I my brain capacity can't handle how to even begin to coordinate something like that. So if you know anyone, you let me know. Okay. So going back to <clears throat> faith and courage, the space you have created, which is in the new moon, because it's all about the emptiness. It's ready to be full. The space you have created is allowing greater gifts that are more aligned with your truth to present themselves. So that is um, okay. So endings. Okay. Or, okay. Let, let's not talk about endings. Let's talk about when something you, you really, you're striving for doesn't turn out. Okay. So it's like this Guna yoga teacher training. Yeah. I'm saying I'm doing it. I'm manifesting it. I'm doing everything I need to do. I don't know what's going to happen next year. Maybe, maybe it's going to fall through the roof. Maybe it's going to blow up in my face and ah, I guess that didn't work out. Maybe it will. Maybe it'll be a huge success. It, we don't know that. Okay. Yet, if it doesn't turn out, that really, that really means that there is a space that is being created for something else. And that's why it's so important to be in the present moment. Because if we're not in the present moment, we lose track of the thought that, well, it didn't work out for a reason. It, something better is going to be coming along, something more aligned. Okay. Yet if we're attached, which is the clashes, it, one of the clashes, if we're attached to the outcome, we lose that sense of adventure. We lose that sense of sattvic qualities, which I'm talking about. Are you with me still? I hope so. Okay, so continue on this path towards clarity by shedding all that is no longer serving you. Okay, so that's fire element. That's rajas, okay? Because fire is transformative. It destroys and it creates as well, okay? So if we can look at, what does it say? Um, by shedding what no longer serves you. So allowing yourself 
to, to really find a sattvic quality in the fire element. And how do we do that? Well, maybe we decrease air a little bit. Maybe we increase air. Maybe we add a little bit more earth. Maybe we take away a little bit of earth. We try and find that balance, okay? So we're no longer so attached to the outcome that we really don't see the gift that's in front of us. Boom, just like that. I said it, uh-huh. Okay, so bring sattva purity into all that you do and your path will continue to become more clear. Okay, so the parts of your life or yourself, of the universe that you're holding on to, that you're forcing, that rajas energy, or that you're like uh, really docile and, and lethargic about, that you're not really doing any movement, you're not bringing any movement in. How can you bring an air element to soothe the fire or to add the fire or to soothe the earth or to add a little bit more movement and flow into the earth, okay? All right, thank you very much, universe. Makes sense? I think so. Beautiful. Okay, what's the next one? I think that was one of the eight limbs of yoga. <clears throat> Let me just see here. Uh, yoga. Zvadya. 89. Okay, yeah, it is one of the eight limbs of yoga. See, I kind of know what I'm talking about a little bit. <laughs> oh, okay, here we go. That's what, so the eight limbs of yoga are internal observances, kind of an external um, uh, actions that we can do, okay? And yoga is made up of those eight limbs of yoga. Interesting enough, asana, the pose, is only one of the eight limbs of yoga. Yet it seems that sometimes we really focus more on the pose than the experience of it, okay? So um, we have the yamas and the niyamas. So svadhyaya uh, is the niyama and it's self-study. Okay, so we're talking about faith and courage, sattvic and uh, self-study. So how can we self-study being in a sattvic state? How can we look at ourselves in a state of um, balance? How can we look at ourselves in a state of um, faith and courage? Having the courage to work through the bumpy and the, the goosebumps and all of the goo and the guck without being so involved in it that it overpowers that air and that balance element. Do you, do you get what I mean? Because you, you can go deep. You can go deep if you're willing and if you have that sattvic quality. So I'm going to give you, um, just wait a sec. Okay, I'm going to leave and I'm going to come back. You can look at the pretty crystals and the candles. I just need to have the uh, another incense. So I'm just going to go get one. Hang tough for a sec. Okay, just hang tough. There we go. I thought I had one out here, but I guess I don't. Okay, so part of this is how can we involve um, ourselves into self-study with faith and courage and courage to go deeper than we ever have been before to shed the layers. Okay. So, um, I've been into, I've been doing a lot of Kundalini practice for the last five months. Um, not long enough. I want to keep going. I'd love it to be 53 years. I would have loved to start Kundalini when I was like a young child. Um, however, that's okay. That's a dream. Right now, I've been devotional into the practice every day for five months, and it is, um, it's amazing because you are in control of your energy. You're in control of your energy. You, 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 and me, you and me, we are in control of our own energy. We command the direction of our energy. Okay, when we're present. 
if we're not present, guess what happens? That energy commands us. And then we're standing in a pool of guck thinking, well, what the heck is going on? Okay. And it doesn't always have to be super deep. It really, really doesn't. It can be if you're one of those people like me, like if I'm going to do something, I'm going to go as deep as I can. But maybe that might not suit you. And that's cool too. Like peace out brothers and sisters. Okay. Honor where you're at. So when you learn to, when you learn that you can command your energy, you can train it. And these are the values as well. The direction of, of prana vayu is you have a lot more power in your life. And from that power, you gain faith and you gain courage. Okay, so everything is all related. So that kundalini energy helps rise up expand and then bring it back down into the body where we can actually use it. Okay. All right. So self-study ready. We were each born with a book of infinite wisdom, stories, inventions, and emotions. Okay. So these stories have been passed down. These are our soul contracts. Um, I just received a Anakashic reading records, uh, practitioner training, I guess you could call it. Um, and it's really interesting to go into the records and, uh, look at the soul contracts and the soul contracts that we've made with ourselves and with other people. <clears throat> and you can actually, um, uh, break the soul contracts. Uh, so if you've got a, uh, uh, an energy with another person that you are ready to shed, yet the, it still is resonating with you. You can go into the records and uh, break that soul contract. Okay. So uh, when we were during the training, when I was in the soul contracts with myself, um, <laughs> I didn't like it. <laughs> I was like, I was like, get me out of here. <laughs> it's true. It's so true though. Cause I was like, oh, this is like way, <laughs> this is like way too much, but it wasn't, I got over it. So I had courage. I had faith that I could hold the capacity to go through those soul contracts. Cause I'm telling you, if you know me, I got a lot of, I got a lot of soul contracts. Okay. And I think everyone does. So to have that courage to dive into it. So here it's saying you have a book of infinite wisdom, uh, the Akashic records, the stories, the stories, the stories, the inventions, and the emotions. And it's really interesting because emotions are energy in motion. E motion. Energy in motion. Emotions are meant to move. They're energy in motion, people. They're energy in motion. So if we're continually stuck in, oh, hang on a sec. Sorry. I have to shut off Alexa. <laughs> okay, this is just casual, right? Alexa, stop. Okay. So, um, if we feel that we have the same emotions showing up, and we are in this cycle, like the moon cycle, and these emotions are showing up, and we feel uh, congested or restricted by them, then they need a little bit of motion to get them going. Hence come in Kundalini with me. <laughs> Actually, guess what? I'm going to be teaching a Kundalini yoga class. I can't believe it. I know I'm entering the yoga world again. Um, at exhale, uh, downtown November 20th. I believe it's the community class. So contact Helen and the beautiful staff at Exhale and uh, see see if I'm actually on the schedule. <laughs> okay, so anyways, so the Kundalini is um, helps this energy because when we have 
Okay, are you ready for this? Uh, we be, we can be stuck in the lower chakras, okay? As as awesome as all the chakras are, the lower three chakras, we live in a world right now, and we're starting to move out of that, you know, as the more we go into this Aquarian age over the Piscean age. So I'm not going to get into that, though. Um, we, we get really um, consolidated in the lower chakras, and it's and we we have these energy pockets in our bodies that the same energy goes to and it gets stuck okay and and then we wonder why we're repeating the same cycles in our lives okay it's like well because we're all made of energy and energy is uh emotion or you know what i'm saying um emo Emotions are energy in motion and are meant to move. So when they're not moving, guess what? Energy doesn't move and it gets stuck. And anything that gets stuck becomes toxic, especially emotions and energy. That's what I'm all about, kids. Come get a Thai yoga massage and move some of that energy around. Okay. And I'm not saying it's easy. Like, no one ever said it's easy. Yet... I feel it is, um, it's essential. It's essential to have an, a relationship with your energy. It's called energy management. You know, we, we manage, we manage the bills. We manage supper. We manage changing the oil. We manage the pets, the family, yada, yada, yada. Okay. We manage everything. And, where is the intent of managing our energy? Because when we man, when we're able to manage and be in relationship with our energy, everything around us changes. And it's pretty powerful. Like I'm telling you, it is like, it, it takes, it takes time. It takes willingness. It takes guidance. It takes faith, which we're talking about tonight, and it takes courage. So let's continue. I kind of sidetracked off there a little bit. So the self-study, how self-study relates to faith and courage. Okay. Um, <clears throat> this book is our own consciousness. If we take the path to truly studying the self, we will never become bored with our findings. Instead of trying to acquire more information, take the focus inward. So do you know that you can have, and I'm relatively speaking here, okay? You can have the same experience yet have a different, a new experience with that same experience, okay? So look at uh, a Kundalini Kriya. Look at Soba Kriya. Look at Sat Kriya. Um, look at Ashtanga. Um, you know, lo look at Hatha. Look at Bikram, w whatever system it's the, let's say Ashtanga, it's the same poses in specific sequence. Uh, look at the Kundalini, I, Soba Kriya, every single day, every single day, the same Kriya, the same mantra, the same mudra, the same asana, the same pranayama, yet it's a different experience. It's a new experience every day. And that's kind of the power of self-study because you allow yourself room to have that experience, that new experience, having the same experience. And isn't that really energy and motion as well? Because if we're stuck in that same pattern, the, the new experiences aren't there. We keep reliving the same experiences, right? And that's like, in, in a sense, aren't, don't we jip ourselves out of the power of the present moment from that? I don't know. Maybe. Okay. Moving on. Boop, boop, boop. Take your focus inward. Okay. There are cosmoses in your consciousness. You have yet to venture into that, that have more beauty than artwork, more mystery than your favorite thriller, more magnificence than all earthly creations say what what does that mean okay hang on a sec there are cosmoses oh there are cosmoses in your consciousness you have yet to venture in 
oh yeah, well, of course, because we're so stuck in our lower chakras that it's sometimes hard to ascend up. But tell you what, once you ascend up, you got to bring all of that good juicy stuff back down and embody it into your physical body. And then you live it or else it gets lost in the universe, never to be seen again. Okay, so there's there's reasoning to this. This is a science, okay? So go join those cosmoses in your in your consciousness. Just come back to earth. Bring them back to earth, okay? So you can use them. However, the passport required to reach these vistas is stillness. Stillness. Through withdrawing from external stimulus, withdrawing from the senses and other eight limbs of yoga, you can, uh, prachahara it is, you can move into the true stimulus, the world inside and beyond you. So withdrawing from external stimulus. So that is like stillness of not only the physical body, stillness of, of the mind. Now, this is something I'm pretty passionate about, okay? Stillness of the mind. Because the mind is meant to think, okay? The mind is meant to think. The mind is linear and it wants to figure things out. It wants to figure out how to light this Palo Santo. It wants to remind, the mind wants to remind me that light sage and Palo Santo from a wooden match, not a lighter. Okay, so that's, that's a reminder. Okay, so the mind is thinking that. Thank goodness we have the mind. The mind is not our enemy. Okay, we just have to command the mind. We have to gain and learn the skills to command the mind. So when we go into, let's say, when we receive meditation, I don't know how many times I've heard people say, well, my mind is busy, my mind is busy. Yeah, well, it's supposed to be busy. It's your mind. Like, that's what it's there to do. So harness, harness it in. Okay. And that that's in essence what I do. I help people learn how to do that without shutting their mind off. So the stillness that the card is asking us to bring into a self-study is maybe not just physical or mental stillness. Maybe it's emotional stillness. Maybe it's allowing those emotions to be there so they can keep moving. If we stifle something, it, it doesn't have enough air, it, it's, it's not going to move. It's got to move. That's why we bring in sattva. So that ties those two cards up pretty good. What do you think? Boop. Beautiful. All right, that, my friends, those two cards took a while. I do have two other card pulls here that I will save and let them air out under the new moon and maybe have another card pull this weekend. I have to say I kind of miss weekend card pull. It's got kind of a ring to it. So stay posted to She Achieves Studio. You never know. There might be another card pull coming up. So eight limbs. There you go. Satva the Gunas. Yoga in our face all over again. And let's close our sacred space. Please bring your hands together. Humble the head. Open the heart. Press the thumbs into the sternum. Breathe into navel. And breathe out. And we come back into our physical bodies now. For a few moments, we ascended into the cosmos, into the guidance of the new moon, into the guidance from the ancestors, the gurus and their gurus and their ancestors, the ancient ones, the elders, ah, the animals, <clears throat> the directions and the elements. And we are so grateful and thankful for this space to be held and to have the opportunity and the experience of coming back into our bodies to experience this greatest gift of life. And we honor all that are here now. We honor all that have been here and that will be here. Thank you. The work here is done. 
I say namaste, satnam. And to close our sacred space, three chimes. Feel the resonation, my friends. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing your space. Thank you for sharing your sattvic qualities. Thank you for sharing your courage. Please check out sheachievestudio.com if you, if you seek a recluse, if you want to tap out of life and tap into your soul spirit, there's lots of good, juicy prana hanging around. Please message me. I love to talk about the universe. If you're struggling and you're looking to soothe that struggle with faith and courage, connect with me. And know, my friends, that you are never alone. I say namaste. Peace out. I love you all. Satnam.